What's going on guys, Andrew Pillick Hockey here back with another video and today is going to be the start of something I'm going to try to do every single day but if there's a slow day when it comes to rumors obviously I won't be able to make a video but you guys know I've been reading Spectre's Hockey for quite some time and he does a daily NHL rumor update um, and I always link it down below so that way you guys could read it as well. He puts together the best sources and puts them into an article so that way you can read the latest NHL trade rumors and I've done videos in the past every couple days or sometimes even once or twice every couple weeks. So. I'm going to plan on trying to be doing um, an, a rumor update almost every single day and an NHL news update every single day. Now the NHL news update might take a couple days to get going uh, because obviously I'll be covering all NHL stories in separate videos as well, but I want to find a way to have a segment where I can talk about some of the minor transactions and stuff like that as well in every uh, day videos. So, be on the lookout for that. A lot of new series and stuff like that are coming out. So hopefully if you're new, you'll stick around and subscribe. This is my new backdrop, but it's always going to be, you know, there's going to be stuff added to it. There'll be more NHL content put, you know, here, jerseys, whatever. I'm going to try to mess around with that. Um, I'm going to try to incorporate as much as I can to uh, give you guys the best content uh, that I possibly can. So uh, today we're going to be talking about the Bruins. We're going to talk about the Blue Jackets, um, just uh, maybe the Flyers as well. So, um, yeah, let's just get right into it. So, uh, again, like I said, going from a really good source is always, you know, something you want to do when you're looking at NHL trade rumors. And uh, Chris Johnson, we all know that he's one of the best in the business. He works for Sportsnet. And uh, he said that there's whispers around the NHL uh, that the Philadelphia Flyers might take a run at bringing back uh, Sergei Bobrovsky. Um, when he hits the free agent market in the summer, if he does. If Columbus plans to re-sign him and gets it done, then that's obviously um, taking the Flyers right out of it. It's taking every team out of it, of course. Uh, because, you know, we've heard some rumors over the past couple months that have been legitimate that Sergei Bobrovsky and the Columbus Blue Jackets have, haven't really been seeing eye to eye. Uh, Bobrovsky's ha Bobrovsky has skipped out on team meetings. Well, not team meetings, but meetings with the GM, um, Kekalainen, I believe. And there's, I mean, there's, let's face it, there's been rumors that he might get moved along with Artemi Panarin because they're both unrestricted free agents coming up this summer. So this could be a really good market in the free agency period if guys like Bobrovsky and Panarin are made available. And Columbus wants to avoid that. Here's the tough part. Columbus is in a playoff position currently, and they have been a very good hockey team over the past couple of years. Well, not a couple, a few, whatever. But they've been a good hockey team. This team can't afford to be selling right now. They need to be buying. They need to be making a run. But they are, like I said, in a tough spot. Uh, I, I, be, I believe the GM's name is Yaro Kekalainen. Or his last name is Kekalainen, I believe. But um, he's got some tough decisions to, to make here. So uh, Bobrovsky began his NHL career with the Flyers. Uh, and he was traded to the Blue Jackets in 2012. And obviously since leaving the, the Philadelphia Flyers, they haven't really been able to you know, make a good run at a proper goaltender or at least have the luck to have, you know, a good goalie. And it is tough to find a number one in the NHL uh, if, obviously, if you don't have one because teams usually like to lock those guys up and keep them there because it is tough to find great goaltending sometimes. Usually they aren't, you know, on the open market as well. So this would be something new if he did get to free agency. So, um, like I mentioned, Bobrovsky would fill the void that the Flyers have had for years. But apparently, uh, there's suggestions that the Flyers wouldn't move past a five-year deal, even though uh, Bobrovsky would be looking for an eight-year, $84 million deal, kind of in that ballpark, much like Carey Price got from the Montreal Canadiens, which kind of looks like an overpayment at this point, which really surprises me because Carey Price, to me, is one of the most elite goaltenders in NHL history, and I know people are not going to like that, but look at his track record. This season, he hasn't been the best. Anyways, you know, he's a Bobrovsky's a two time Vesna winner. And if he doesn't collapse in the playoffs this year, and he, well, if he's still with the Blue Jackets, I would imagine they would be in the playoffs as well. You would have to think that he's going to be looking for big money because uh, the, the Blue Jackets apparently want to keep, you know, keep hold of him. They, they want to be a good team. They want to hold on to him and Panarin, but it's looking like Panarin's basically one foot out the door and Bobrovsky is still kind of up in the air. They're not sure if that's going to happen. But, 
if the Flyers don't want to go past five years, there will definitely be people that are looking um, past the numbers, you know, that the Flyers are offering. They they would they would probably go over the ten million per season. They are there are teams that can spend that money. The Flyers apparently can spend that money uh, from what we've been reading, from what we've seen from Cap Friendly. You know, they're going to have some money to be able to move around, and they're probably going to make some moves if they were to go after a top end type of talent like Bobrovsky. So we'll keep an eye on that, and it'll be updated in the days coming if something else comes out now uh quickly on the bruins uh so from the boston globe matt porter is saying that even though there's been injuries to key players like bergeron chara um you know uh miller's been hurt uh apparently uh cam neely isn't really itching to make a move to this team uh team president cam neely uh he doesn't want to have to make a move they feel like they have options internally as well and looking the way that they can play especially against my toronto maple leafs the Bruins are still a dangerous team. I mean, you still have pieces like Pasternak and Marchand and whatever. And these guys are going to come back, still have Tory Krug, uh, McAvoy when he's healthy, of course. Uh, I believe he's still healthy even after the hit from Zach Hyman. You know, this Boston team's still good. So they're looking at internal options, and they'd rather do that rather than giving up assets. Now, uh, apparently from NBC Sport, Sports, uh, Joe Haggerty uh, was asked if Boone Jenner may be a fit for the Bruins. Now, again... I don't see how the Columbus Blue Jackets would want to get rid of more talent or just remove players from their roster unless they felt like it wasn't a fit and they could add something else. But they they just don't believe that that would be the best fit um, for them and that Wayne Simmons would be a better fit. Now, again, the Flyers could be looking at moving Wayne Simmons if things don't go their way this year. And Wayne Simmons would probably be one of the best, if not the best, piece available um, at the trade deadline if that was to happen. Apparently Haggerty really wants to see Simmons in a Bruins jersey uh, because, you know, he is a two-way type of player. He's very skilled, but he also has a lot of toughness to him. And in the playoffs, you need players like that. So that would be interesting. Again, this will be something that we can come back and update to see if maybe the market starts to move for Simmons. And it's the same thing with Bobrovsky, like I mentioned, and um, the Bruins. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this new segment that I'm going to be doing. I know I've done this before, but this is the new setup. And uh, this is just a better way of doing it. I have my laptop here in front of me. I have a desk. This is just a lot more of a conversation type of video that I like to do. And the NHL Daily News will be happening, but they're all there still will be the regular videos that I provide where I just talk about random news pieces that come out, especially if it's a big news piece. So, again, I'll just give like my kind of my afterthoughts um, in the NHL Daily News type of thing. I'd like to make more videos on the channel daily, so this is going to be a part of it. So, if you're new, make sure you subscribe. I'd love to have more hockey conversations with you. Join the squad. Let's get to 4,000 subscribers. Uh, I set a goal at the beginning of this year, I believe literally right in January when the years changed uh, from 2017 to 2018, that I'd like to be um, at 5,000 subscribers at the end of this year. Unfortunately, it's looking like that's not going to happen, but hopefully we can get to 4K. Uh, again, this, this has just been a lot of fun, and I'd like to continue doing it. So if you'd like to join the ride, please do so, and click that notification bell as well. I'll see you guys in the next video or stream. Peace.